If you want to learn how to use your smart device, such as a tablet, smartphone, or laptop, to remotely control your Mindstorms robot, then congratulations, you are in the right place. How's it going everyone? My name is Kyle, and I'm here with the BuilderDude35 YouTube channel, a channel that aims to teach you everything you've ever wanted to learn about LEGO Mindstorms, and today we're going to learn how to make a remote control robot, so don't go anywhere. I've got the Mindstorms app open and ready to go, and I'm ready to start demonstrating some programs that can get you to use your smart device, like a tablet or a phone, to remotely control your robot. I'm gonna start off with real simple, kind of lame examples, and then eventually we'll work up to a cooler example where we use the joystick. So the first thing I want to draw to your attention is there is a remote control tab in the bottom left corner. It's kind of a, a teal color, but if you click on it, it's going to be completely empty. And this might be kind of confusing. Don't panic. The reason why that is, is because you actually have to go and start designing a remote control template with actual widgets on it. And then once you place the widgets, the code blocks that correspond to it will appear in that menu. So what the heck do I mean by that? So if you look on the right side of the screen, there's this little controller icon. Click on that and this lets you design a controller pad for your robot. And there's a little edit button here. And now we can hit, click the plus button in the bottom right corner and it gives us all of the options for different widgets that we can place down. I'm going to start with the simplest one, which is just a button. And if you click in the top right corner, you can change the color to a whole bunch of different stuff. So I'll make this one like a pinkish red. And even if you wanted to, you could rename it. So by default, it is B1 for button one. I think that's kind of lame. I'm gonna name my button John. So name that button John, click okay. And then once you're done placing widgets like we are for now, click the check button. And now the widgets are ready to control your robot. Click on the X button on the left of the screen and then go into that remote control tab I was talking about before. And there you see the programming blocks for that widget have appeared. So we can go ahead and drag one out and start using it. So we'll say when the button that I named John is pressed, uh, you also have the option to choose release, but I'll just keep it on press for now. Let's make it play a sound. So I'll just say play sound cat meow. So we're ready to demonstrate this little programming snippet, but there's one other thing I want to draw your attention to. And that is when you go to download the program to your robot, so click the green play button in the bottom right corner, you'll see a notification in the top right that says switch the hub to streaming mode to run this program. Uh, simple, just click on switch, just let it switch it over. And now this is in streaming mode, which means when I press play now, I can click on this controller icon and this remote control pad that we designed is now interactive and functional. So let's see what that looks like in action. So that was just one button, which is of course the simplest thing that you can do. And I promise you we'd move on to more interesting examples. So let's do that. Let's see what it looks like if we want to program a D-pad. So that's one of these widgets here, which has the four buttons in an arrow pattern. So if you play like PlayStation or Xbox, that'll be on the left side of the controller. And you can just drag that out here and place it anywhere you want. And I'll just change the color of this to yellow. And so once that's there, click OK. And then again, when you go into the programming blocks section and click on remote control, we see the widgets for the D-pad have appeared. So let's use this D-pad to control the auxiliary motor, changing its direction from uh, forward to backward, depending on whether we hit the left or the right button on the D-pad. So what we can do is drag out these little events kind of similar to the way that we programmed the simple button before, but now we have a whole bunch more options. So when D-pad D1, which is the one that I made, the up button is pressed, and you have the choice between up, down, left, right, or no button press at all. So in this case, I'll say uh, when the up button is pressed, there, again, there's also the option for released. Let's get the motor in port B to just turn on. So start this motor in port B and spinning in one direction. And then what I can do is I'll duplicate this for the other direction. So you can click on that and hold it and it will let you duplicate. So when the down button is pressed, let's have the motor spin in the opposite direction. And then of course there's one last case that we have to count for. And if we don't add this case, the motor will keep spinning forever, which is no fun. We need a case when no button is pressed. So when no button is pressed, we'll just say, instead of starting the motor, we will say, please stop the motor in port B. And now I can start running this program in streaming mode, click on the controller icon, 
and use the interactive D-pad to control that motor. Next, I want to show you something that I think is even cooler than the D-pad and probably a little bit more functional and practical for this application. So what I want you to do is just recycle this code that we wrote for the D-pad because we're going to replace it with something even cooler. Go back into the controller configuration uh, and click the edit button and then add a widget for a slider. You could choose horizontal slider or vertical slider. They're both the same thing, just in a different direction. I'm going to use the horizontal slider and I'll put it down here. And I don't know about you, uh, I'm wearing purple right now and purple actually happens to be my favorite color. So I'll just change this to purple and click OK to confirm that selection. What we can use this horizontal slider for now is we can do a proportional control over the motor's speed. So the farther away you move this slider from the center, the faster the motor will spin. So let's see how we can program that. So what I want you to do is drag out an infinite loop. So this will continuously sample the value on the slider and readjust motor B's power. So we'll say set motor speed to some percentage and we want motor B. And now we can go into remote control and say the slider's position, so slider SH1, which is the one I just dra dragged out, that is going to become the speed for this motor. And then of course the next step is to say start spinning that motor in that direction. So what this means now is that we're continuously sampling the position of the slider and setting the motor speed to that slider position. So let's go ahead and run this on the robot and see what we can do with it. So for my last example, following my promise of each example getting successively more cooler than the last one, we're going to program a joystick to control the robot. So again, go into the controller pad editing tab and add a widget for the joystick and just plop that down wherever you want it to go and uh, maybe change the color to purple and then click OK. And what we can do now is we can see the code blocks for the joystick are there. And we're actually not going to use events this time we're going to use the, the measurement block, which is the oval shaped one. Actually programming a joystick can be kind of tricky, but thankfully the hard work has already been done for us. We can import blocks from another model, such as Blast, which already have this functionality built in into a my block and just use that in this project. So you'll probably notice on the left side here, I already, I already have the model blocks open and ready to go. But if you don't happen to see this in your palette already, what you can do is in the very bottom left corner, this button, click on that to add extensions. And you can see here where it says model blocks, uh, you'll see a green add button and click that. And that will add the model blocks to the palette. The model blocks are the blocks that come with the Lego supplied models. Now that we've imported the model blocks, we can use the remote control functionality that Lego already designed for us and just drag that into our project. So I'm gonna use the one that comes with Blast. So remote control X with something and Y with something. And so this is where you drag in your joystick. So joystick here, and then we're gonna need a second joystick block here and make sure the axes match. So uh, remote control X with joystick X axis and Y with joystick Y axis. And both are set to J1, which is great. And now we can run this on a robot and have a little bit of fun with controlling it and driving it around. While I was driving the robot around, I noticed that the vertical axis, that is the Y axis on the joystick, actually moves the robot in the wrong direction. Thankfully, if this happens with your robot, whether it be on the X axis or the Y axis, it's pretty easy to fix. And that'll be the last thing I show you today. So go into the operators tab and drag out the multiplication here. Uh, we're gonna need two of them. And next, take out the joystick blocks that we placed before and put them in the second field of each of these multiplication operators. In the first field, type in the number one if that axis was driving in the correct direction. And if the axis was driving in the wrong direction, so I said my Y axis was mirrored, type in a negative one. And typing in a negative one will actually flip the direction that the robot drives in every time it gets an input. And then you can drag these back into the places they were before, just like that. 
and I will run this on my robot and now we'll see that the joystick is moving the robot in all of the correct directions. This video only just scratched the surface of what's possible with this remote control feature for the LEGO Mindstorms. Needless to say, I'm going to be exploring it with more of my own projects soon. So make sure you click that subscribe button so you stay tuned for all of the updates and projects I have coming. And in the meantime, let me know in the comments below what you have planned with this awesome remote control feature for your own projects. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.